Hello everyone. This is our fifth video from uh, the series of Introduction to the Basic Measuring Instruments. And I hope you're loving the series and you're having fun with science. I know we all are stuck in our homes due to the COVID-19 situation. I also had to move places and hence you will see all the setup has changed. But I think we should not stop due to all this and we should keep going and keep having fun in science. So as I told you in the last video, in this video, we are going to continue with the clocks. So what, what all we had covered? Uh, we had covered the sundial, uh, the sand clocks, the water clocks, and then we had also seen the clocks with the candles and the rope knots, etc. So now we are going to see the clocks which evolve in the future centuries. So actually what happened was a standardized way, universal standardized way was the need of the time and so all these following clocks came up. So there was an Englishman named John Harrison. So he had made this clock H3. But as you can see it was a very bulky clock. So he came to know the need of a very smaller clock which could be used by sailors as we saw in the last episode. So around uh, I think 1751 he invented this H4. It was a very small clock of around a 12 cm width and it was so accurate that it just lost a second per day. Uh, it used spring derived mechanism and it was a great achievement of that time. So then in 1927 came the Coyds clock. So in this Coyds clock a crystal known as quartz was used. So are you wondering how a clock can be driven by a crystal? Yes. So as we saw earlier the pendulum clock that was driven by the oscillating pendulum. So in this clock as the pendulum moves, it regulates the speed of the gears. And then the moving gears count the time of seconds and then convert it into minutes and hours which are displayed by the hand that we around. So in this quartz clock, the work of the oscillator is done by this quartz crystal. So quartz is silicon dioxide. It is a piezoelectric material which oscillates uh, around 32,000 times per second. This crystal oscillator creates a very minute oscillations which are of very high frequency and hence these clocks are very accurate than the mechanical clocks we saw earlier and it lost just a second over lots of years. And 40 years later came the first atomic clock which created a new time standard. This uses cesium atom to measure time. The natural frequency of cesium atom is used as the resonator like uh, the oscillator in the previous clocks. The cesium atoms are funneled down a tube through microwave radiations where the frequency is 9,192,631,770 cycles per second. Yes, that precise. And then the cesium atom resonates with the same frequency. Hence, these clocks are very, very accurate and precise and just lose a second over thousands and thousands of years. And, which, and with such advanced technologies, with such advanced clocks, we can uh, track time on our mobile phones, our laptops, even smart watches and whatnot. All these devices are synchronized with the internet. Then why do we have slightly difference in time in different devices? This is because all these devices use different versions of atomic clocks, but which are very precise. 
So I hope you have loved the journey of this clocks and how they evolve from the last week. So the activity that we are going to talk about today is a very interesting activity which is also a little bit based on the last video. So if uh, some of you have missed the last video, uh, you can go back and check out the last video in which we talked about the ancient clocks. So what you need to do is just see the timing and write it down of the sunrise and sunset from your house. Or you can also google it up on internet, the exact timings of sunrise and sunset from at your place, okay, where you live. Now calculate the duration between sunrise and sunset that gives you the day duration, the time of the day. Now also calculate the duration of time by the followed night. Now tell me if the duration of time of the day is equal to the duration of the time of the night and let me know in the comments below. Now you can also do one more activity. Just go and google out the day from the year which has the same duration of time of the day and the night and let me know in the comments below. I hope you are loving science and doing all the activities and having fun at home. Bye!